Hi everybody, I'm going to talk to you about genograms and ecomaps. Uh, give you a little bit of back, background information as far as what they are. Um, this is also a useful intervention that you can use within family counseling or even individual counseling. It's a great way to gain a background and history information uh, from your clients, but using a visual tool of the genogram or the ecomap. Um, this is also a very useful way for clients to be able to see um, some of the patterns that they may have themselves um, or that may be derived from their family of origin. So first of all, let me share this. Okay. So the genogram and ecomats, so it charts the biological and impersonal relationships. I uh, usually can do them within three generations, but it's up to you. You can modify and change this. So one of the purposes, again, is to kind of understand some of those relationship patterns, family functionings, um, different histories of abuse or substance use, um, even deaths and different um, life events that have occurred with your client or family. Um, also, it may you can tailor this to also include gender beliefs or values that may be present throughout the family, um, different things such as family secrets or how they communicate with different members of the family. Um, you can also use lines to, to show if the relationship is strong or if the relationship is weak or if these people don't talk. So there's so much that you can do with this. So I'm just kind of giving you some examples of ways that you can take this in a certain direction with clients. Um, you can also include losses, illnesses, miscarriages, divorce, death, disabilities, um, different themes that might be present, and then different avenues um, or aspects related to culture. So these are kind of the standard symbols that you can use, but you just want to make sure that you have a key that is going to explain uh, what the symbols mean. Uh, so this is just, you can see here that they use the circle for female, a square for male, um, also uh, a triangle for unknown. I would like to also add um, a different symbol for transgender or depending on how they identify with their gender, you want to be um, sensitive to that as well. Also, when doing um, genograms or ego maps, you're going to be touching a lot of very sensitive areas for clients. So you might even want to give a disclaimer in the beginning saying that we're going to be going over a lot of different really personal areas in your family of origin. So if at any point you feel uncomfortable, please let me know and we can stop and take a break or we can come back to this later or we don't have to, we'll have to address that area. So here's a genogram example with a key. Um, so as you can see here, if you want to just briefly look uh, on the PowerPoint, you also want to make sure you include a key so that when you're looking back, you can know which symbols have which meaning. Again, you, it's also up to you if you want to allow your client to pick what the symbols mean what to them, that's totally fine. You just want to make sure that you're on the same page as far as that that symbol is meaning this to them, and you're not making an assumption about what that symbol might mean. Um, here are also some emotional symbols that you can use to deal with more emotional conflict, or if you want to look at emotional patterns that a family may have. So there's a wide variety of different symbols and variations of symbols that you could use um, to constitute abuse or even distrust or hostility. So this is a great way, again, to get a full picture as far as what your client, what types of relationship your clients has with their family of origin or who they identify as their family. Um, so again, this would be a great way to even to be able to do this yourself, to be reflective as far as um, to be aware of your own genogram and what things that are in your family of history so that when you're doing it with a client, you're not going to be shocked as far as what might come up for you when you're interacting with a client. Uh, 
Um, so these are a lot of questions that I have developed in the past um, as far as working specifically with families or even individuals when I'm doing a genogram with them. These are some good questions that will kind of open up um, the conversation to have a more in-depth session to gain more information, more insight from the client. Um, when there's a birth or an adoption, how do family members react? When somebody dies, how do family members react? Are there any kind of rituals or things that they do when somebody dies? Um, then you might, uh, do you see differences in expectations for family members based on gender, age, roles, birth order? So there's so much that you can use right here in so many different directions that you can go. Um, the last one says, when a crisis hits, how do family members react? Do you see this response as helpful or hurtful to the family? This is a great one um, that you can also do a whole session to gain information about when crisis hits a family, how do different family members respond, how does your client respond, or if you're doing a group or family session, how do the different family members respond and what kind of dynamics do you see there? Uh, again, just to recount a couple different ones that, I, that I've written down here. Um, what do you see as the source of values for your family? Are there any religious or community organizations or affiliations that your client has? Um, and then is there any particular aspects to your family that you see as healthy or unhealthy? Again, this is allowing the client to be the expert in their situation with their family and they're allowed to say what they see as healthy or unhealthy and why or why not. Eco maps. So I know you guys have a class called uh, Ecological S Systems. So again, this is looking at the client, the person in the environment. So this is a good visual to see what kind of support systems, resources, or what kind of systems around them are working for them or working against them. Um, so this could involve extracurricular activities, family members, schools, social supports, local organizations, religious organizations. Um, this could be anything that the client, um, sorry, this could also be an assessment of their relationship with their social environment just by being able to see. Um, so specifically, um, people of minority ethnicities, if they're going to, they might see a lot more conflict of different systems working against them in various ways. So this would be really important to identify um, which systems are really working against them and then which systems are really working in their favor or what support systems they have that are working to reverse some of that oppression. So here is an eco map skeleton. So this is just kind of a sample drawing of what it could look like. Um, again, this is an example key, but you're welcome to make up your own variation of this. Uh, what I like about this one in particular is that it involves, um, you can write, you can use the line to do a strong relationship or a weaker vulnerable relationship. This can be really good, um, especially when you need to identify who is a safe person for your client, who are unsafe people, you don't want to be encouraging support or safety with certain people who the client identifies as unsafe or unsupportive. Uh, for EcoMAC practice, this says um, there, there's a lot of different ways that you're going to be able to, once you get into drawing the EcoMAP and using this with your clients, um, there's a lot of different variations that you can do this and ways that you can reflect on, on using this and how it can be helpful. But this is, these are some questions about ways to think about how we might use this with a client, a time that it might be necessary or helpful, or a good way to even just create a visual aid to help our clients in the future. Okay, that's all for you.